Hey there, Vinyl Community. It's Joel from Planet 13, and I'm just going to run through some recent pickups that I purchased in March. I'm going to try and keep this under 20 minutes. So let's get on with the show. Uh, first album I got, I wanted to be slightly offended and I wanted some punk music, so I picked up Fear's 1982 debut album. Fear is a band I wasn't all too familiar with, although I was aware of them because Guns N' Roses covered them on the Spaghetti Incident album. They did Let's Have a, or I Don't Care About You. And then they're also featured on the soundtrack of Repo Man, uh, which is one of my favorite movies. I don't really recommend you seek that movie out, though. It's a very bizarre, weird 1984 cult movie with a punk rock soundtrack. This punk rock is a California hardcore, they'd call it. I wasn't really familiar with this band, though, but they are quite prolific, prolific, prolific. Let's go with that. They're quite prolific. Uh, John Belushi actually got them on Saturday Night Live to perform in 1981, and then they were immediately banned from ever returning to SNL uh, because they, well, they performed on the Halloween episode, and they brought in 20 to 30 punk rock bands um, who slam danced and moshed and um, stage dive during the performance, which would have terrified anyone in the audience uh, because it's such a small room where they film SNL. So it's, it's if, you, if you Google or YouTube, sorry, YouTube SNL space fear, you'll see this show, this performance, and apparently Belushi's in the audience and E. McKay is in the uh, slam, dance, slam dancing audience as well. Um, e. McKay is from the band Fugazi, I can't say it. I can't say it. F U G A Z I. I don't know why I can't say it. I can normally say it, but on camera I can't say it. Fugazi, Fugazi. Let's go with Fugazi. Yes, yeah, McKay is in Fugazi. Um, this isn't like punk like Ramones, although it has like the Ramones kind of sense of humor. It's more like uh, Black Flag. If Black Flag, I guess Black Flag is funny because um, six pack. And uh, TV Party. Actually, I don't know. No, Six Pack isn't funny. No, yeah, Six Pack is funny and TV Party are pretty funny. Um, so this is kind of like that kind of quirky, funny, but more edgier than the Ramones, I guess. Um, if I could just kind of briefly sum it up. Favorite song on here for me is New York's All Right If You Like Saxophone. Uh, next album I got, I am obsessed with this era. Uh, never heard this album before until last week. I picked this up. Um, I paid 25 Canadian for it, which is, you know, like 18 American, I'd say. Throwing a number out there. Um, this is Iggy Pop's The Idiot. This came out in 1977. Why I'm fascinated with this is that it is the perfect yin to the yang of David Bowie's Low. And Bowie co-wrote a lot of tunes with here on here with Pop. And then you can really feel the influence. You can really see the influence between these two albums. These are both, some say this is Bowie's best album. Um, I haven't made my mind up on that yet, but these two albums are very dark, depressing, droning. Like if you heard the song Nightclubbing, you know what I mean by drone. Uh, but they are very cold albums. And what was going on with these at the time? Uh, so Nightclubbing is off this. Also it was uh, Sister Midnight, Dum Dum Boys, China Girl, which Bowie later covered on um, the Let's Dance album. And it's, I guess, a cover of one of Bowie's own songs, in a sense. Uh, but, okay, so I'm just going to give some brief history here, and I'm going to, I guess, paraphrase um, what I know. And um, I'm leaving out a lot of details, so if you're a Bowie Iggy Pop expert, uh, you can leave a comment below, but don't be, like, all mean about it. Because to give a proper summary of this would take a long time. So Bowie released what they call the Berlin Trilogy, which is Low, Heroes, and The Lodger. But then when you look at it, um, The Idiot belongs to that Berlin Trilogy because Bowie released these two at the same time. And um, if you if, if you watch interviews with Iggy Pop, he's like, yeah, Bowie, Bowie's a big... You know, Bowie saved my life. Bowie... Because what had happened before uh, Bowie released Low, he was addicted to cocaine. He was living in L.A. at the time. 
and he was losing a ton of weight. He was he had that thin white Duke persona, and he's really thin because he was just drinking milk and living off peppers. And um, he has a song on Low called Always Crashing the Same Car, which is, I guess, the story of him. He felt ripped off by a uh, cocaine dealer, so he crashed his Mercedes into the guy over and over and over again. His guy's car, the drug dealer's car. Not the actual guy. No one was murdered. Um, but he had to get straight, and Pop had to get straight, and Bowie saw a lot of promise in Pop, and because Biggie Pop was down on his luck, because uh, Raw Power from the Stooges, I guess, didn't do amazingly well. It wasn't the success they wanted it to be. So Bowie took Pop over to Europe, and they lived in a hotel room for a while together, like a small apartment together in Berlin, and they also lived in Switzerland and France. I don't know the exact details of that. Maybe Pop just stayed in Berlin. I don't I don't know. Someone knows. There's a book written about it. Someone's probably read the book and could crack me on these things. I'm just giving a brief overview, like I said. Anyway, these go hand in hand together, and they're very dark, dark albums. And I'm just fascinated with this era. And you can, you know, when you, you listen to albums, you don't tend to hear like the themes um, or the progression or the storytelling. But those two albums then complement their next albums, which Bowie and Pop wrote uh, with that, Lust for Life. And then Bowie with Heroes wrote that without Iggy Pop. But these both came out you know, shortly thereafter, too. Um, and these are happier albums. So then these two albums that I showed previously complement these. Like, if this is like, if... I'm going to try and explain this. If this is like, I hate myself, I'm depressed, I'm just drinking myself to death. This is the I'm hungover and life is awesome album. So this is like a much poppier, you know, if you heard the song Less for Life or The Passenger, they're kind of poppier albums, you know, more upbeat. And this is kind of like the depressing album. And then you get the same thing with uh, Low and Heroes, where Low is very depressing and Heroes is, you know, a little more promising. Uh, with um, Beauty and the Beast, Joe the Lion, Heroes, Secret Life of Arabia. These albums too, they're a lot different than Pop's albums, but you kind of you see the themes. And it's, it's just an insight with uh, Bowie's mind at the time. And these albums, Heroes and Low, they have like their half songs and then their half kind of just ambient songs, soundtrack album. Like there's no lyrics or vocals or anything. Or if it has vocals, it's kind of, you know, there's no words it's associated with it. And um, just fascinating albums. And if you're not familiar with that era of pop, Iggy Pop and um, Bowie, I totally recommend you check it out. Uh, these albums aren't cheap or not expensive, I mean. Uh, they were recently reissued, so there's, there's plenty of them on the market. Uh, you can buy Heroes and um, Low. I've seen it go for like 18 Canadian to 16 Canadian, which is peanuts in American money. That's like 12 bucks. So totally recommend checking it out. Uh, high quality music. When you first listen to it, you're not really immediately hooked, but you know there's something there that's just bigger than, than the albums itself. So when you connect these albums together, you really see this big picture and he released these four albums plus The Lodger within like a two year period because uh, Bowie, this is The Lodger here, Bowie really had to get off the drugs so he had to keep busy. So just fascinating stuff. Again, these were recently reissued. Totally recommend you check it out. And that's my my two cents. <laughs> uh, next album, because I was depressed from Epop's um, album, The Idiot, I had to get some uh, poppy poppier. I guess, popular than Iggy Pop album, and that would be Bon Jovi's Slippery One Wet. So this is an album I never owned on cassette or CD, but I saw a good deal on it. Uh, originally the album cover that wasn't released in America, but I think you can buy it in uh, Europe or Japan. Maybe not Japan, I don't know. Uh, it would be a wet t-shirt of a girl in her boobage. But this is the American Canadian release cover and it's just basically a garbage bag where someone dumps some water and wrote slippery when wet on it at the last minute because they're like, we cannot uh, we cannot put this album out with um, nipples showing through a t-shirt. We're going to offend a lot of people, a lot of girls and guys and religious people. and So yeah, let's not do that. Anyway, um, 
Good songs on here. Uh, you, you know them all. You know You Give Love a Bad Name, Living on a Prayer, Wanted Dead or Alive. I thought I never heard this album before, but when I got to the rare cuts, like uh, Wild in the Streets and I Die for You and Raise Your Hands, I knew them. Then I realized uh, when I was in grade seven, uh, we were allowed to play music in pottery class and someone brought this album in and our pottery teacher just loved this album. So we listened to it a lot and that's how I knew it. And um, so it's kind of funny listening to this like 30 years later. It could be less, could be a little more. But I'm saying approximately 30 years later and going, holy crap, I know these songs. Um, yeah, just funny how life is. Next album I got, um, it's from the Scottish alternative band called The Jesus and Mary Chain. This is a greatest hits album. It's got all their uh, singles on here. So it's got uh, their biggest hit on here is probably Just Like Honey. Because that was on a soundtrack in the 2000s to a movie with Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson. Uh, Lost in Translation. Yeah, that got a lot of fame from that album. Um, the one I mostly bought this for uh, this song, Something Always. I, I just love that tune. And I remember I had that on CD when that came out. And I didn't have a, a lot of their original music. So I figured, you know, I'll start with this on vinyl. I'll probably pick up Psycho Candy next. Because that's their debut album, I think. Um, great band. And what's interesting about them is that they brought out Nine Inch Nails. On one of Nine Inch Nails' first tours uh, for Pretty Hate Machine. And Nine Inch Nails recently toured last year in 2018 and brought out the Jesus and Mary Chain. So he's kind of returning the favor after all these years. And it comes in uh, these black polylined... Nicely polylined um, jackets, covers, whatever you call it. Sleeves. Sleeves. That's what you call it. And another album I got, another debut album I got. I picked up Nirvana's, if I'm saying that right. Sometimes I say Nirvana, sometimes I say Nirvana. Whatever you want to call them. Their debut, Bleach. Uh, so Dave Grohl is not on this album. You got Chad Channing on drums. This is released on the Sub Pop album, or uh, record label. It's their debut. Really cool album. My favorite tune off here is Negative Creep. It's in my mind right now. And I keep singing it. But there's a lot of great tunes on here. Uh, Floyd the Barber, About a Girl, School. I like all the songs on there. Great album. I'm just not going to cover it too much because you probably know more about it than I do. Uh, Second to last album I got is Kiss Unplugged. Unfortunately, this isn't a gatefold, but it is a double LP. Never had this on cassette or CD. I did have, I guess, a compilation of it off the Kiss box set. And um, this is most notable for reuniting Kiss with Ace Freely and Peter Chris. The last five songs on here, they bring out Peter Chris and Ace Freely along with the, the original band, or not the original band, the, the current band at the time, which was Eric Singer and uh, Bruce Kulik, plus Gene and uh, Paul. So they brought out Ace and Peter Chris, And they do a lot of rare songs on here uh, that you wouldn't normally get. They did some deep cuts, which makes this a fascinating album to me. Like they do uh, Do You Love Me? which they don't really perform in concert that often. A World Without Heroes, which you would never really hear that often. Uh, 2000 Man with Ace, they did that. That's a, that's a Rolling Stones cover. Uh, probably the standout on here for me is um, I Still Love You. It, it just sounds amazing. Paul's voice on here just sounds amazing. Uh, sure Know Something, that's pretty cool. I think Melinda was talking about that uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, one of her favorite riffs is uh, Sure Knows Something, I think. Forgive me if I got that wrong. Um, but just, uh, I pretty much picked this up because I saw Melinda show it in another video from, uh, uh, I think it was in de December. And I'm like, well, you know, because she was going, she was saying, you know, these Kiss albums are disappearing fast, uh, these reissues. And it's particularly the, the uh, non-makeup albums that are going quick. So I'm trying to get those as soon as I can. They're kind of pricey up here in Canada and they're hard to find because um, when something's hard to find, it tends to be pricey. 
So this I paid 35 Canadian for, which is, I'm going to say 20 American. Not bad, just still a lot of money. Um, it does come with a poster, though. And it's the last Kiss album to really come with anything. I guess Psycho Circus came with that lenticular cover, but this comes with a nice poster. We haven't really gotten an extra in a Kiss album since... Um, I'm going to say Unmasked. Unmasked came with a poster. So did Dynasty. And then it comes in these uh, nice, nice sleeves with the uh, custom label. Final album I got, I got to have a disclaimer. It's not a norm album I'd normally buy. Is disclaimer number one. Disclaimer number two is I was on drugs. Disclaimer three, I was on illegal drugs. Uh, the drugs were due to a procedure I got. So I have, I have food allergies. I'm not going to go into it. But uh, every once in a while, I have to get an endoscopy where they check. Because um, the food allergies I have are like a slow burn kind of. If I eat something today, it's going to affect me two days to two weeks later. And it's not anaphylactic shock, but my throat does swell, making it hard to swallow. So I'm kind of thin because I can't eat too much. And I have to get an endoscopy where they shove a camera down my throat. And they uh, take a biopsy and then they count the number of white blood cells. So I get this done every six weeks because I cut out of food and then I see if uh, my white blood cells go down and then later on I start introducing foods and they'll count to see if my white blood cell has gone up because you're not supposed to have white blood cells in your throat. Short story. So uh, anyway, this is my second endoscopy and I hope I don't buy albums like this after the other endoscopies. But anyway, they, they put you on drugs and they're called like, it's called twilight sleep. So you're on these drugs where you're not knocked out, but you're aware, you're responsive uh, at the time. You just don't remember anything. So when they were shoving a camera down my throat, I was aware of it, but I don't remember any of it. Which, yeah, isn't a bad thing. Uh, it's not like horrible. Um, I kind of enjoy the process because my mind is like thinking, uses it as a puzzle. Like, what did I do that day? What did I say to people? Because you're, you're, you're walking around talking to people. You're obviously not driving a car or operating heavy machinery. Um, but you're, you got to get a drive there. You got to get a drive home. They won't let you leave unless you have a drive home. They won't even let you leave if you got a cab or anything. Because they're like, yeah, right. This guy has a cab. He's driving home. Um, but uh, usually when I go to the hospital, because uh, going to the hospital sucks. I can't treat myself by getting a hamburger after, so I go to a record store. And uh, in this case, I couldn't go to a record store because someone was driving me there and back. I didn't want to infringe on their time. So I must have went on Amazon and bought an album. And the album I got uh, is Britney Spears' Baby One More Time. Uh, don't know why I bought this. Well, I do know why. I was on drugs. Uh, legal drugs, again, disclaimer. And... Um, don't unsubscribe from me. I'm not going to show too many Britney Spears albums. But I do like this album. I do. Um, not like number one fan. I couldn't like run through the lyrics or tell you a lot about it. I just like pop music sometimes. And this is just dumb pop music. Uh, yeah, it's girly. Whatever. It's a picture disc. First picture disc I've ever had. Um, not that I'm going to display this. It's just going to kind of go in the vault. Uh, it's the other side of the picture disc. But yeah, it's pretty I guess um, came with a download card too we got lyrics on the other side to some songs and uh, not much I gotta say about this album um, I like it for what it is which is like a late 90s pop album um, I don't expect to buy any more Britney Spears albums I just thought it was funny I got this I was on you know all the things that you buy on drugs You, this is probably what you'd buy I guess uh, uh, probably I'll still listen to it once in a while. Once in a while, it's nice to put on after some heavy music, you know, listen to some Slayer, listen to some Britney Spears. Why not? Uh, and it's nice when, uh, I have a lot of company over and a lot of girls like Britney Spears. Um, so it's good to put on for that reason. Anyway, um, that's all I got. So hope everyone has a great week or whatever. Great days. Everyone has a great weekend, whatever. Um, Anyway, take care. Bye.